Offbeat Cinema, brought to you by Mighty Taco. Celebrating 50 years as Western New York's iconic spot for buffalo and Mexican flavors. More at MightyTaco.com. all you cats out there from Portland, Oregon to Portland, Maine. Welcome to Offbeat Cinema. As you can see tonight, we're not at the Hungry Ear Coffee House. No, it's obviously we're not. We're at the drive-in. Um, but we're just here, I'd say a little early, like a <laughs> bird. Well, we're here early, Zelda. Yeah, and, and I'd say mission accomplished because we wanted to get the best space. I mean, just look ahead. We are dead center with the screen, and we have no one even close to us tonight. No one is crowding us because we did get here very, very early. So uh, I, I, I guess that's all right. I'm okay. Yes, Zelda. That that's the spirit, Zelda. You know, it's the drive-in spirit. And you know, uh, bring what you want, wear what you want, do whatever you want because we're at the drive-in. And you know, I don't think we've had a flick that has been as close to its title um, um, in our setting in a long time. We're watching Drive-In Massacre tonight. Can you dig that? You can dig that. And, and Sanford, you're right, you're right. This is the perfect movie for tonight. And it's also it's also a cut above most horror flicks. It's, it's very well done, I'd say. I, I, I would agree with you, Zelda. In fact, I dig this flick so much that I was going to form a rock band and name the band Drive-In Massacre and change my name to Johnny Rumble. That is a great idea. That, that would have been a good idea. It would be. I mean, right? Because if there's a if there's a band called Arcade Fire, why not? Why not Drive-In Massacre? <laughs> see that. Why not indeed, Zelda? Why not indeed? Uh, you know, uh, and, and the film itself sticks pretty close to its own title. It's a bunch of kids that uh, uh, get together and go to the drive-in. And guess what? They're chased around through the whole movie by a crazy psycho with a, with a knife. <laughs> yeah, Bird, you're right there. That pretty much explains the plot. But, like I said earlier, it is a very good horror movie. It's, it's pretty well done. So cats, you you dig it now while we wait until it gets dark. Oh, Zelda, don't worry. It'll be dark in three hours. You dig the flick now. Welcome to your favorite drive-in theater and a sparkling new season. Watch our screen and local newspapers for all the fine shows coming this way. Show after show will feature the latest hits, the biggest stars for fun-filled, pleasure-packed evenings. Relax, come as you are, and spend an enjoyable night out with the entire family. No parking problems, no babysitting problems. And there are always tasty snacks at our modern refreshment stand. Thanks, folks. And once again, welcome back.
summer night In that dream swept away Wind and water are soothing There's a May yesterday Kissed by yesterday Till the sand warmly cools me Shadows dance in the fire Okay, we haven't got all night, come on Lightning burst through the stars Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I promise I'll do anything you want to do back there. 
anything if you let me listen to the beginning of this picture. Okay? All right? Okay, come on. <laughs> Will you cut it out? Let me get it. Come on, Alan. Sweetheart. Come on. I just, on. I just want to hear this. I just want to hear something. Oh, that's nice. Come on, you stop tickling me. Come on. Get in here. Alan. Come on, will you let me hear it? Alan, come on. 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 dogs? Yes, sir. And three of those, and one of those, and five bars of these, and a cup of that nice hot liquid. Uh, coffee. Uh, coming right up. Oh, and two bags of those peculiar white puffy material. Uh, you mean our crunchy popcorn. Uh, uh, shall I wrap that for you, sir? Oh, that's all right. My saucer's just outside. <laughs> they come from miles to enjoy our intermission. Calling all beatniks. Looking for offbeat cinema swag? We've got it. T-shirts, 15 ounce classic coffee mugs, hats, more hats, stickers, and more. Man, like this is commercialism. Cats, do we have offbeat cinema swag? Well, as a matter of fact, we do. Get with the in crowd. Order your offbeat cinema merchandise today. Just go to offbeatcinema.tv for details. Yes, sir. We're reading the coroner's report now. No, the only prints were the victims, a couple of local kids. Now, I'm sorry too, Captain. Headlines like those, it's gonna be Panic City in here any time now. Yeah, I don't know why we don't have headlines that big when we win one. Because of that, every nut in town's gonna be on the phone claiming credit. On top of that, We'll have to check them all out. Did anybody see anything at all? Uh, between the screaming and the sirens, most of the cars split. Oh, we got a few names and numbers. They're being checked out now. Let's hope somebody came up for air long enough to see something. Yeah, must have been King Kong. Yeah, one clean swipe on each victim. Well. Let's take it from the top, get the owner. I checked him out. He's been living in Hawaii for about a year now. But I talked to the manager, Austin Johnson. You're really gonna like him. you about those homicides that occurred last night. Maybe you can help us. Maybe you saw something. So, a couple of horny kids got themselves chopped up by some coop. So what? Besides, who really gives a damn? 
we do. That's why we're here. I told Van Heusen that closing down the carnival, opening this outdoor whorehouse is going to bring nothing but problems. What carnival? Van Heusen's carnival, he operated right here on this very spot for 20 years. He closed it down about 15 years ago and opened up this trash heap. I managed the place and I banked the money and I booked the films and the projections too. But you think you appreciate all the work I do around here? Uh, have you ever seen anyone strange around here? Someone you might think would be capable of something like this? Yeah. I see them every night. Everybody that comes in here, they're crazy. And I see them all. You want to know why? Because when I get here, I got to come in and set up this refreshment stand because that broad I got working for me isn't even smart enough to pass first grade math. And then when I leave here, Gotta go over and check the ticket. I gotta double check to make sure those flang bangers in there aren't ripping me off. I get out of there, I go to the projection room, and there I stay all night. I can't even get out of there when the movie's open. By then, everybody's gone home but me. Rough life. Yeah, you bet your butt it is. Have you ever seen the victims before, anywhere, at any time? What, teenagers? Hey, ain't no difference. All one big zit with long hair. I've got two of them, Mr. Johnson. I'm sorry for you, buddy. It means teenagers, Mr. Johnson, not zits. Well, we sympathize with you, sir. You've got quite a workload. I wouldn't want to be in issue. Thanks a lot. You've been a help. I thought you said you were the only one here. That's a half when he sweeps up around here. All the time, at night too? He sleeps there. You really want to talk to that piece of puke? He works here, doesn't he? Hey, Jeremy! Get out of there! Not true. I work. Hey, you looking for suspect? Here, lock the geek up. Geek? I was one in the carnival. Uh, I, I lost all my teeth biting off snake heads and, and chicken heads, too. If I had my way about it, I'd have canned him a long time ago. How long have you worked here, sir? Sir? <laughs> His name's Jeremy. It's Garmy. The great Garmy. <laughs> Ta-da! Ladies and gentlemen, the greatest sword swallower in all the world. No, not him. He's so stupid he'd cut his own throat if I gave him a knife. Look, I gotta get to work. And you, when they get done with you, you get this place cleaned up, you understand? Mr. Garmy. Uh, Jeremy. My name is really Garmy, but my friends call me Jeremy. Do you have many friends, Jeremy? I used to. Lido and Hobo. Uh, they were the, the elephants at the carnival. Uh, but they're all gone now. What exactly is your job here, Jeremy? I sweep up, I keep the place clean. And I guard the place. I make sure nobody sneaks in. You like working here? Yes. Did you ever see anything strange, anything unusual occur here? No. Um, just the movies and the kids. But I like the kids. And Mr. Van Neusen will never let them get away with killing two young people. No, sir. Who? Whoever did it. Where were you when this happened? Uh, I found them. After everybody went home, I saw this car, and I went over there, and there they were. Um, he had his head cut off. Had you ever seen the victims before? Probably. I probably see everybody who's ever been here. But, but they weren't troublemakers. What kind of troublemakers come around here? The kind that try to sneak in. Uh, but I chase them. 
with my flashlight. There's one guy who always takes two spaces. Uh, so his car won't get scratched. You used to be a sword swallower. Do you still have any of those blades? Mr. Van Heusen lets me use his private collection. Van Heusen has a collection of blades? Oh, knives, swords, all kinds. He taught me my craft. But then I had my accident. Well, where is this collection now? Do you have any of it? Oh, no. Mr. Van Heusen has it. He takes it with him everywhere he goes. I think it's in India. Mr. Van Heusen's in Hawaii. Oh, well, then that's where he is. There's one guy who comes every night, and he's a troublemaker. Never stays in one spot. He's always looking for girls or a couple that are smooching. Ah, you know what I mean. I don't like him. He's here every night. Almost. What's he look like? Pasty face. Skinnier than Mr. Pins in the carnival. What kind of a car did he drive? Oh, Chevy. <laughs> Smashed in the back. He won't listen to me when I tell him to stay in one spot. He's always moving around. How old is he? I don't know. Uh, but, but he tries to look younger than he really is. You don't like Mr. Johnson, do you, Jeremy? He's a bully. Someday, somebody won't take that office. Does he push a lot of people around? The people that work for him. He makes me talk to the big ones. There you are. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I gotta go. Hey, Jeremy. Uh, when a guy comes here again, the one that keeps moving around from spot to spot? Yeah. Do us a favor and get his license number, okay? Okay. Take care now. How many people do you suppose there are like that? Like what? Uh, did you do that sort of thing when you were a kid? I don't think so. You know, cruise the drive in, try to pick up on the broad. Oh, yeah. Our drive-in just had a double murder. Yeah. You know, they may have closed that carnival, but the freaks are still hanging around, and we just talked to two of the choicest ones. Gee. Well, that other one we were talking about might be a freak, too, but I'd like to talk to him. Yum, yum. It's time for a tasty and refreshing snack. <laughs> to satisfy your hunger, your thirst, your sweet tooth. So visit our refreshment center now. Let's go! <laughs> Welcome. Welcome back, cats. Well... Bird and I were getting hungry since we got here so early at the drive-in, and uh, he's going now to check out and see if the snack bar also opened early because we're pretty hungry. And, yes. Uh, oh, oh, 
Oh, you locked up. Wow, bird. I, I got us. I got us. You got some, enough to feed the. I actually forgot uh, your your popcorn. So uh, let me set this down. You know, it's nothing like the uh, great outdoors to work up an appetite. I'll be right back. Uh, yeah, I guess if you consider a parking lot and a drive-in, the great outdoors. This is for you. Oh, thank you, birds. You're so thoughtful. Drive-in Massacre is a well-known classic and it has lots of great surprises and, and cool stuff. So let's get back to it. Let's just get right to it. We'll wait here. We'll keep waiting. It'll be dark soon. same talk 50 times but we haven't come to the same decision you want an argument don't you i know i don't want to argue with you i i know what you're i know what you're thinking and it's not that easy i realize it's not that easy but someplace sometime you're going to have to stand on your two feet and make a decision i have made a decision i love you and I, it's not so easy. I just can't leave my wife like that. I've got, I've got two beautiful kids. I've got, uh, I've got responsibilities. She's not. I know you have responsibilities, but you have a responsibility to me, David. How long do you expect me to wait? I've been Laura, very patient. Laura, you're going to have to wait. You're going to have to. I'm telling you, you're going to have to wait. How long do I have to wait? David, you don't understand. I can't wait. What do you mean you can't wait? I mean, I can't wait. Oh, the time can... has to be now. You can wait, Lori. David, I'm pregnant. What are you going to do about it? What do you mean, what am I going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? <laughs> oh, boy. David, you have to make a decision tonight. You're right, you're right, you're right. Now! I'll tell Doris in the morning. I promise you I'll tell her in the morning. You're really pregnant. You're going to have a baby. Yeah. That's super. Yeah? That's really nice. You don't mind? Not at all. I think it's uh, beautiful. That's great. Mr. Odom, where are you going? Going to town. Honey, mm -hmm. let's go someplace else. Why, what's wrong with you? I don't feel comfortable here. What's the matter? We always come here. Oh, didn't you hear that two people got killed here last night? Oh, 
that's okay. Go. No, it'll nothing will ever happen. You come on. Oh, don't be silly. That was last night. It's nice to meet you. We're together. Give us some idea of what we're looking for, huh? Gentlemen, I don't expect any miracles, but I'll do the best I can. The toughest thing about this kind of case is that there is no overall pattern for a psychotic killer. If there is any pattern at all, it becomes an individual thing. The MO remains the same, and the weapon is usually the same. The most important thing for you to remember is this. The time between each killing gets shorter. One other odd fact. A psychotic killer is usually a man. When a woman is involved, it's rare and it's usually for financial gain. While the male is driven by lust, by passion, and by hate. I don't have to tell you guys how important this is, huh? So call in any man you need, wherever you need. And the doc here says that he's on call any time, all right? And keep me posted, huh? So what do we got? Jeremy? Possible, but doubtful. Rule anybody out. No. We don't have any real proof on anybody. No, we got the weapon anyway. And no prints on it. Bring Jeremy in, will you? Okay, John. I wish. If there's one bust I'd like to make. It's certainly a possibility. Everybody stuck in that projection booth all night. Yeah. What about the guy that roams around all night? Now, I'd like to get a line on him. We're going to have to work a stake out if we're ever going to see him. Come on in, Charlie. Have a seat. Um, thank you. Thank you. Would you like some coffee? Oh, that would be good. Oh, with lots of sugar. I like lots of sugar. Jeremy, you recognize this? It was in those two young people. But I didn't touch it. Yeah, yeah I know. Foreigner didn't find your prints on it. You ever work with a sword like this? Uh, oh, yes, many times. You recognize this particular sword? No. You're sure it isn't part of the Van Heusen collection? 
Oh, no, I'm sure of that. I know all of them by heart. I learned with them. I worked with them many times. When you quit your act, who took over? Uh, Austin Johnson. But he was never any good. I taught him, but he was never any good. Mr. Van Heusen uh, worked with him, too. But he said he would never be as good as me. Yeah, he said that. Why not? Uh, he liked to chase the girls too much. And he could, couldn't keep his mind on the act. He was better as a barker. Actually, he was, he was scared of the knife. I see. So Van Heusen closed the carnival down and turned the land into a tribe in here. Yeah. Doesn't it seem strange there are two former sword handlers, knife throwers, working at a place where four murders have been committed with swords, knives? I don't know. I mean, Mr. Johnson was never any good. Uh, and and uh, I, 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 I haven't seen a knife before. Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't like them any, anymore. I, I, I don't like them. So you found the bodies tonight. What'd you do then? I, I called Mr. Johnson. Checks, he called. What were you doing before you found them? I was following uh, the guy that parked next to the car with the body. Who is he, Jeremy? The troublemaker. The one that always comes and never stays in one spot. His car was right next to the murder car? He got out of one side, and that's when I saw him. And then he uh, crawled in between the cars, and then I couldn't see him anymore. Then he crawled out from between the cars and he went to the bathroom. Who is he? I don't know. R really, I, I, I don't know. Oh, but I, I got his license number, uh, just like you asked me to. I, I remembered. Maybe that will help. I hope so, Jeremy. I hope so. I'll check it out. starts in five minutes. It's refreshment time, folks. Time out for a delicious snack in our sparkling refreshment building. Every item a fresh, appetizing taste treat. We've a large assortment of freshly made sandwiches. How about a pizza? None better anywhere. Sizzling hamburgers grilled to your taste. Mouth-watering chili dillies. Dog days, hot dog days that is, somehow have a way of turning out to be fun days. The pop and sizzle of the juicy meat seems to say, come and get me, I'm done to a turn. Yep, hungry or not, it's hard to resist the tantalizing aroma and taste appeal of a sizzling hot dog. The nice part of it is, there's one waiting for you right now at the refreshment stand. the good guy or the bad guy. I don't care. Tails. 
You got it. officers. Can we come in? What do you want me for? We just want to ask you a few questions. I didn't do anything. Then you won't mind if we come in. Or perhaps you'd rather have the neighbors hear us. Mr. Engelston, I understand that you were at the local drive-in theater the other night. Any law against going to the movies? No, but you were there again last night. <laughs> I like the picture. Is that all? That's all. What's this all about? Come on, Ingleson. You know what went down there last night. I heard something and you were seen parked next to the victim's car. I don't know anything about that. Well, I didn't go to any car. I was watching a movie. You were seen going to the car, Mr. Ingleson. No, no, you don't. We have an eyewitness. You crawled out of your car to the victim's vehicle. What were you doing? Oh, look, I... Uh... There were two bodies in that car. Well, not when I was there. Not when you were there. You know what that ink? You know what that is, Engelson? That's you. Yeah. That's your rap sheet, Engelson. Please, just leave me alone. How'd you work up nerve enough to do it? Huh? I didn't do anything. Soft enough for you to work with now. Right. Mr. Eagleson, have you got any knives or any swords in this house? Then you won't mind if my partner has a look around. No. Okay, Mike. Have a look. What do you do for a living? I drive a truck. Get all over town, see lots of interesting things. Not so interesting. Check, check out the chicks while I'm driving. You, uh, got quite a collection. <laughs> really interesting pictures. No. No, I'm just a collector. Do you like them? They're pretty good, aren't they? Yeah, they're pretty good. Got some interesting books over there. Who knows? They might become collector's items someday. You know, kind of like funny yeah. books. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. We got a few of them around, don't they? Station. Um, you got any other interesting hobbies? Oh, I just go to the drive in a lot. It's a hobby? Well, I guess that's about all I do, you know. How did you know I was at the drive in? Well, Mr. Engelson, you're just about like a fixture over there. Matter of fact, I'm surprised you don't have a part-time job. Yeah, but nobody knows me. I mean, how did you know I was at the drive and nobody knows my name there? That's all right, we knew you were there. What did you see when you were looking down into that car? I didn't see anything. You were seen going to the car, Mr. Eagle. that girl. She 
She's in pretty bad shape. Oh, yeah? She was murdered with a sword. Oh, I haven't got any swords. You're sure about that? Oh, yeah. Like the kitchen knife? Kitchen knife. Everybody has a kitchen knife. You didn't see anything strange? Me. Mr. Eagleson, my partner thinks you murdered those people. Did you? No. Can you prove it? Uh, no. Uh, uh, no. Uh, I, I won't go back to that drive in, though. Where? I promise I won't go back there again. Why not? Because we're on to you? I won't go back to that drive-in again. You don't go back. The murders stop, and I come after you. Come on, Mike. Knock it off. I'm done. Mr. Engelson, you mind if we look through your car? Would you open it up for us? It's good to see you fellas again. It's been a long time. Yeah, I'm uh, still driving the same old car. It's really been a peach. Yeah. Yeah. Screwed it up myself. Uh, you ought, you ought to take a look in my trunk. Uh, you got a great collection of tools here. I won't get ripped off by those mechanics. Got enough to do my own valve job, ring job. Uh, you really ought to take a... Thank you. 
got uh, any more business to take care of while you wait? What a turkey. Mm. How can you see it? It's a beautiful movie. Uh, this plot has been done so many times. You've seen this picture twice? Man, he could break in a car in this place in one night. I hope you settle soon. I gotta pee. Well, you look just gorgeous, sweetie. You sound just like a horny husband. <laughs> Bunch of degenerates. Jim. Jim. Are you going places uh, you want to go? Jim. No, not, not really. Uh, I really want to see this movie. You watch the movie. Yeah. Well, oh, I'm trying to. Let me just create my own movie effects right here. Jim. You've got to, oh, this is so fantastic. You've got to, you really got to see this. You're not going to believe this. And this is where he says, look, now listen to this. What he says. You're not going to believe this. You know all the dialogue, right? Oh, I told you I've seen this. Oh, come here, come here, come here. Jim. Come here. Oh, you're missing the best part. Look, now look. Please stop flapping your mouth. Oh, my. Oh, did you hear what he said? Oh. No, I didn't hear what he said. You did miss the best part. Now listen. We can oh. see it. We can see it. Come on, or we'll do something. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful? It's trick for... Shh. Shh. You've seen this picture twice. Would you give me... Shh. Oh. What was the name? I don't think you wanted to see this movie. You bet. I told you it was really good. Mm-hmm. And you have to see it. Jim, listen. Jim. Jim. Man, Novak. Daughter. You wouldn't give me the water rats. Oh, Jim. I told him I needed him. Now you have to see this. Who is that drink? I I can't see him. There he is. He's looking this way. Kiss me, you fool. Oh, get away from me, you idiot. I hope so. We don't need any more of that. Anything for my pension and welfare. Well, just stay on your side of the car. My God, married only two hours, and you don't want anything more to do with me. Well, could be your bad breath. I'll say something sweet. Yeah. Well, then, damn it, you watch the picture by yourself.
Mr. Koch, Mr. Leary. I've been watching him, and that's him over there in the white car. Some disguise. <laughs> yeah, we know, Jeremy. Just uh, move on, now, okay? Oh, I don't really have anything to do. I can stand here and help you watch him. Jeremy, it's all right. We got everything under control. We're, we know where he is. Why, why does he dress like that? Because he has very unusual taste in clothes. Jeremy. It's a part of the job, Jeremy. It's really kind of, kind of a nice dress. What the hell are you doing up here bothering people? You've got work to do and you don't do it. I'm... Oh, you... Excuse me, ma'am. What the hell are you doing here? What did you do? Come in here, flesh your badge, scaring hell out of my people? Or did you pay like everybody else? It's a public theater, isn't it? And we paid. Yeah. Well, don't bother my help. He's got work to do. Cleaned up and damn it, you do what I tell you. you leave people alone. Don't bother them. Go work. Yes, sir. Man, we should be halfway to Mexico by now. I agree. It's not up to get out of here. Coast clear? Yeah, he hadn't moved. I mean, lost him in Germany. I don't see him around anymore. I gotta go take a leak. Where do I go? <laughs> Where do you usually go? In food? Like this? <laughs> Going out in the bushes. Oh, big help you are. <laughs> nightmares in the deep, in your favorite horror movies, but not in your living room, on your TV. Don't let pay TV be the monster in your living room. Pay TV and cable TV companies are seeking the right to charge you for the very programs you now get free. If you want to stop pay TV and save free television, sign the petition in the lobby of this theater. Let your lawmakers know how you feel in the fight against pay TV and cable TV. Jim Rex? What's Jim Rex? Would you believe a movie audience guide presented as a public service by this theater's management to help you select your motion picture entertainment? Well, that's what it is. And we urge you to learn these rating symbols and use them as a guide for you and your family. G means suggested for general audiences, all ages. M, suggested for mature audiences, parental discretion advised. R, restricted, persons under 16 not admitted unless accompanied by parent or adult guardian. X, persons under 18 will not be admitted. 
This seal in advertising indicates that the film was approved under the Motion Picture Code of Self-Regulation. You let them all go, and they're probably back there right now, ripping me off. And you keep me sitting here. One more time, John. We found out that you used to be a knife thrower, and we didn't find it out from you. Now, what are you trying to keep from us? Oh, I haven't picked up a knife since the carny clothes. I didn't like it that much anyway. Why did you do it? Because I like barking less, okay? A ham sandwich? Yeah. Better be careful, you might beat me a father. Just answer the questions. Oh, for Christ's sake, you, you got the brains of a piece of wet liver. Lettuce, tomatoes, mustard, may I can't eat that puke. Mr. Johnson. I can arrange it so you can eat all the cold spam and hard bread that you want to. Yeah, well, it's better than that crap. Now look, damn it, I gotta get out of here. Business is booming, and I got to keep my eye on everything. Johnson, we want you to close it down anyhow. Are you crazy? We haven't done this much business since the place opened. We can get a court order and close it for you. Well, that's the only damn way you're going to do it. We're trying to catch a killer, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, and a pretty poor job you're doing of it, too. Three cars away from where you're sitting, and they wiped out two more of them right underneath your snow. You know, if you partner with me on the ball, you're caught with everybody. But instead of that, he sits over there, pulling all my help away. He's cuddling with that ugly-looking broad he was with. Uh, you, you don't happen to have a sister, do you? Oh, that wasn't his sister. Get away from me! Man, you smell like you've been sleeping in a pig pen. You're just mad at me because I found... Look, you piece of filth! And I'll tell you something else. When you get out of here, and you come down to the theater and you pick up your stuff, I don't want to see you around there again. <laughs> All right, that's about enough. Now shut up. No, God. You pigs hauled me down here and you kept me here all night and half the damn day. I got to get back to work. I got a business to run. And I got to keep my eyes on everything. You're going to run your business from the slammer before long if you don't shut up. Yeah? Well, you either charge me and lock me up or get off of my back. Or let me go, because I don't give a damn if half of L.A. gets chopped up. Now what are you going to do? Get out of here. You know what I tell you? When you get out of here, you come to the theater and you pick up your stuff. You understand? Yeah. Oh, how I wish it was that foul mouth son of a... You want some coffee? No, thanks, Jeremy. We got a lot of work to do. Oh, okay. Well, I'll go get my stuff. Keep in touch. Let us know where you are.
you sure you want to talk to him, piece of puke? It's Garmin. The great Garmin. Jensen's? Excuse me, Captain. Hold on just a minute. Yeah. Got it. They got a guy cornered in Jensen's warehouse. Just wiped out two people with a machete. Sounds like him. Excuse me, Captain. I think we got something going on. Set you free. <laughs> you, you, you like that? Right? Set you free so you don't have to put up with this lousy world anymore. Huh? You want me to set you free? Five minutes to go. demonstration of my new invention, the goodies machine. Special for patrons of this drive-in, the machine turns out deluncious hot doggies one after the other. And thirst quenching sodas also. Gives popcorn of the most tasty kind, plain and buttered. Candy too, crunchy and dandy. Steaming hot coffee and ice cream too. These goodies are at a snack bar just waiting for you. Mmm, 
Four minutes to go to showtime. I was wrong about you, little girl. You do still have some meanness in you. Don't worry, though, honey. I... I'm gonna cut all that poison out. You just stand still now, dear. I'm, I'm coming, honey. I come now. I gotta do this. Here. Here, 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 here I come, ready or not.
Little girl? You after me? Danny, you after me? Yes, we did, honey. He's killed a lot of people. He didn't mean to. He's my father. He didn't mean to kill my mother and my aunt. He's been sick. He broke out of the hospital just this morning. Damn, I'm sorry about that little girl. I don't want to kill our old man. I almost blew it last night when Austin came out of that projection booth and grabbed Jeremy. Hey. Do you realize that he can come out of that projection booth during the movie? Between real changes. Mike, you're right. Let's go get that bald-headed garbage can. fired me. But I want to show him that I'm not mad. I've got a going away present for him. In here. Jimmy, he said he'd kill you if he saw you again. He can't kill me. But he hates you. He hates me because I've got Mr. Van Heusen's knife and sword collection. And I'm gonna keep it. Austin's been hiding it. But I'll show him. Jimmy, don't you understand? He came in here madder than hell tonight. He bawled all of us out and told us if we saw you to tell you to leave. He owes me money. I've got to get that. Please, Jeremy. I want my money. And give him his present.
Cats, we hope you have enjoyed this flick. It's a classic horror cult film, isn't it cool? And we know we will soon when it gets dark and when Bird wakes up from his snack food coma. Because after all, it's all about freedom and snack indulgence. Uh, 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 did, did, I, did I miss it? Is it over? I dozed off for a minute. Something didn't agree with me. I don't know what it was. <laughs> well, Bird, maybe it was the uh, two wash tubs full of popcorn, four hot dogs, all that candy, no. mellow cups. No, no, Zelda, it wasn't any of that. Oh, I know, I had some yogurt earlier today. You know, I bet that, that upset my stomach. <laughs> oh, Bird, <laughs> nothing upsets your stomach. <laughs> I can say that. Cats, we hope you did enjoy this movie, uh, Drive-In Massacre, and, and we hope to soon, <laughs> as soon as it gets dark, so, maybe in a few hours. Well, you know, uh, we will enjoy this flick, and we know you enjoyed this flick, as you do each and every week. We want you to come back and enjoy everything we show here, because we show the movies that must be shown here on Offbeat Cinema. Just remember, you know what to do next. Keep watching the skies. Just keep watching the skies. Bird, the sky says it's not gonna be dark for another three hours. Oh, it's still bright out. Now, folks, it's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night.